things. Welcome back, everyone, to the Natty 19 podcast. I'm Jonathan Marshall, and I'm joined once again by the rest of everybody. <laughs> the rest of everybody. James is looking at, well, he, can, he you distracted me. What, is everything recording okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. No, I, yeah, I was definitely looking into that, but it's going. <laughs> you squinted. You had like a problem face on. I'm getting old, man. You're like, I can't see <laughs> anymore. Dude, right. he's on my ass about the squinting too. We need glasses. Well, I, I, <laughs> I literally sit like three feet Maybe away from my me, screen dude. to play Maybe. Gems of War. <laughs> Maybe it's me as a glasses wearer. Like when I see other people squinting, I'm like, why don't you just get fucking glasses, dude? Fun fact, Bran Stark, the creepy uh, look he gets when he's out looking off the camera and everything, it's because he doesn't have his glasses on. <laughs> oh, is that so? No, yeah. <laughs> so that's how they get that so effect. So he's literally looking at nothing because he can't focus. He's squinting. He's <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It explains why he hasn't done a fucking thing this whole time. He did something he we just don't sing. know yet. Yeah. <laughs> didn't he send? Didn't he kind of fly with the ravens? Off Who knows what he's done by the yeah, time okay. this airs? All right, right. All right. Wait. Do we want to talk about this or not? Oh, we can't. Oh yeah, we can't. We're dicks. Oh shit. We got to take it out. Cause there's some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> some stuff I got to. get Welcome off back, everybody, <laughs> to the <laughs> 19 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> We're here. What did I- we're here missing Game of Thrones as we speak because we're Literally committed right now <laughs> because we're committed to bringing you an episode every week. That's right, episode seventy-three. Except for me, I'm pissed that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I am pumped. I love what's going on. It's a bit of a crawl. Okay, this is a dungeon crawl, and we understand not a lot of ground is being covered, but you guys, you understand at home. It is one of those things. You can't rush a party through the Tomb of Annihilation. They need to go through this. They need to analyze. And let's find out what happens next on the Natty 19 podcast. I'm going to say you're amazing, too. <laughs> <laughs> She dropped the key in the water. Oh my goodness! Can't oh. fucking believe her. At least I got the key. Copernicus you over here. Got it yet? Copernicus over here doing the bare minimum. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not qualified for the job. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Oh, recap. <laughs> <laughs> recap, Copernicus is possessed by a koala bear. <laughs> uh, so uh, a quick rundown uh, of what happened. You guys, okay, you ent- you came in. Copernicus, uh, you guys just started smashing the hell out of that statue. Uh, Copernicus got free. Um, you set up the beacon. It appears to have done something. It certainly activated Um no telling what's going to happen with that yet. Uh, you explored a few more rooms uh, from that statue room. Looking north, uh, there was a glistening fountain with some maidens. Uh, not iron maidens. Um, Stone maidens. Disappointed. <laughs> disappointed <laughs> that they weren't iron maidens, but they were maidens nonetheless. It was a statue of like Bruce, Steve, and Nico <laughs> McBrain. <laughs> Or the actual torture device. Dave Murray's got to yeah. be in there, too. <laughs> All with pictures of tentacle porn. And then we can't forget Adrian Smith and Yannick Gears. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we pulled a fast one over at Eddie. That's right. You came into the tomb, took the paper mache mask off of Eddie. You're punny tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out when Charlie starts getting punny. <laughs> well, you know, it is pun day. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Prepare for a night of punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work on these all week? <laughs> 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 Do 
these are all spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you put in those? <laughs> What'd you just feed us here, man? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been those jalapenos. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, whoa, this ra- episode is off the rails, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, so moving to the south, you discovered a couple secret passageways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of them was a stairwell leading down into. Di- now you hear uh, tinkering of sorts at the bottom of those stairs. What? Yeah, the I mentioned stairway. it. Oh, the other stairway. Okay. Yeah, the other stairway. <clears throat> the other secret door led down into the th- into the tomb. Let's call it a tomb. Let's call it what it is. It's a. There's a sarcophagus in there. You ended up donning the paper mache mask. You, uh, in doing so, you eluded the many-eyed bronze disc and possibly some other uh, attention. You muscled open the sarcophagus. Copernicus had uh, a bit of a bit of a mental dialogue with the spirit of Obalaka, my new homie, who then uh, Copernicus had willingly let the spirit invade him. And now he's just not happy unless he has some kind of like other spirit mm. or entity, right? Cohabitating, he's codependent. Him. Yeah, <laughs> he's just open to that. <laughs> he's tell a, me he's if just I'm, a conduit. Tell me if I'm wrong, though. This uh, gong with all the eyes is like total big trouble in little China kind of prop. Yeah, I would certainly yeah. say that. It belongs, it belongs in Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Never they, watched think, that movie. That's a good one. I think what? they act I know. What? Oh my god. We can't goodness. be friends. Yeah. I, I knew this was going to piss it's off the It's a fun one. You would like it. Uh, I think, I no could reason. be wrong, but I think they did uh, take it off the set of that movie when they were designing the Tomb of Annihilation. Sarah oh, Rack nice. went in. Yeah, Sarah Rack went in. He was looking for things. Uh, that must have cost him quite a bit. <laughs> I think he probably stole it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can return it for a hefty reward. <laughs> oh shit! You meet Kurt Russell in the process. <laughs> um, now you moved south after that because uh, Copernicus was now it spoke to you. Copernicus, his voice. You can only assume it's your new passenger. After searching the room, you found another secret door to the south. This one, uh, the door creaks open as it slides open. It doesn't open as much as the one to the north, but it opened enough for Arame to look down in and see this river, the flowing river into the darkness. Along with it, a gaseous substance is floating in the air, accompanied by the stench of rotting flesh. Now, within there, you had seen this skeleton key. Let's call it a skeleton key. Had roamed into view, stopped at the base of the stairs, and that is where Arame, through the half-open door, lit its ass up, through a chill-touch orb, a chilly-filled orb. (laughs) (laughs) It's not an orb. (laughs) Turn the heat up in there? There's no orb. It's a ghostly skeletal hand. A ghostly skeletal, you heard it here first, <laughs> uh, had, had, she had managed to single-handedly annihilate the skeleton with the, what was the pop quiz? What was the shape on the skeleton key? Triangle. Triangle. Okay. I don't have it in front of me, so I hope you're right. I'm still a little <laughs> funny on whether or not cold or... These kind of effects could affect the undead, you know, chill or the kind of damage that five e they I, just get resistance. I okay. questioned that, but then when it said if you hit an undead target, it also has disadvantage on attack rolls against uh. you. That uh, this particular cantrip, anyway, because even though it says chill touch, it's actually necrotic damage that happens, which is also okay. kind of weird because it it's is already kind dead. Of weird, yeah. You got to remember necrotic damage. I the way I in the way I gather anyway is almost like a natural progression. It's like the damage of time, right? 
effectively, that iron statue was completely uh, susceptible to necrotic damage. So if you think of it in, in terms of over, over hundreds and thousands of years, but happening instantly, you know, that's necrotic damage. It's like timely rot and decay, I guess. I don't know. It's just, that's the way I'm uh, picturing it anyway, you know? Um, that's the only way I could make sense of how uh, an iron statue can be affected by necrotic damage. Yeah, if anybody out there has some uh, technical knowledge of this subject. Or necrotic damage and undead. Yeah, you can write or in. Or necrotic damage and stuff. Yeah, write, write, in. write it in. Just at, call Charlie just, at 603. <laughs> <laughs> Educate us. Natty19podcast at gmail.com. Natty19podcast at gmail.com. That's right, and as far as uh, damage immunities on uh, the skeleton, and I don't, kn- I don't have a regular skeleton in front of me, but this one is poison, the only one. Right. Well, when I was thinking of Pathfinder, when in Pathfinder creatures have a type, mm-hmm. and those types come with immunities and stuff like that. Sure. So, like, if yep. a, if a creature had a type of undead, undead themselves have, you know, immunities and such. Right. That come with it. The umbrella effect. Yes. See, I don't so, know. I always viewed it as like withering, like the matter that comprises of stuff. Mm, so, like damaging the. Well, yeah. see, that's what I think of as entropy, and that, that I was searching for that word while you were talking about like the passage of time. I think of that as entropy, not necrosis. Gotcha. Yeah, necrosis. I see as rot. Yeah, more like yeah. right, but things rot over time in nature. Right? No, I, I yeah. like the way you described it. But who's, anyway, it who's happened. going to get that head? <laughs> so uh, the skeleton crumbles. The head falls into the slow-moving, shallow, dark, wet river. It sinks or, or floats. <laughs> Ooh, I thought Does you said it sunk. I wanted to. I wanted it to sink, but am I wrong? Yeah. It would sink. It would I sink. think he said it sunk. Maybe it's how you did old say it, it is. Sunk. If it's porous, skull. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. it floated it for. Maybe it how floated much for it a little has bit. Still. Yeah, maybe it floated for a little bit, but then slowly sank. All right. <laughs> Could be waterlogged. <laughs> oh yeah, because it was already wet. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's get back into it uh, now that the recap is over. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a long recap. Dude, getting longer every week. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll start the yeah, recap. Nice. We had requests for <laughs> recaps. Uh, there's there's people who are listening week to week, and they want to know what happened real quick because they didn't get a chance to listen to the previous one. That you know, they're not binging it like a lot of people are. You know, so the recaps. Or if help you are binging folks. it, then there's a gap because you might binge like five episodes, wait a few weeks, then binge the next yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love the recaps personally. I like them too, but I think we should start the recap from the very beginning. Sindra <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Cindra laughs> Sylvain, <laughs> <laughs> your benefactor. <laughs> Every week. (laughs) (laughs) And then you gave the dragon gold to get to the (laughs) peninsula of Cholt. (laughs) There you met an angry Ankylosaurus. (laughs) Fruit juice, fruit juice, fruit juice. Juice, Copronicus pillar. Yeah, don't worry. (laughs) Pillar. (laughs) Okay, back at it. You guys are in. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not driving, kill the lights. I want you to release a poisonous gas. <laughs> Did we play the music yet? <laughs> yeah, it already played. Okay. We didn't say it, but I'm going to put it in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Should we play it again? <laughs> Hit the music again. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right, Kaylee's in the dark. Whoa. I like that. Jesus. Yeah, I wow. like that. I've never seen him in that light. Yeah. I know, it's yeah. different. Kayway is in the dark. <laughs> Careful of those claws in there, brother. His headphones are lighting up like that. What does he look like? He looks like... Uh, he always says they don't light up. I don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he say that? Yeah. No. 
Uh, you can tell uh, we're we're flighty tonight. Kind of looks like Princess Leia in a way. Doesn't oh it? shit! That's, that's what it I was, was wondering with. why I was popping. Like Tron. Princess <laughs> Leia meets Princess Leia meets Tron. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> Definitely has a Leia Tron going. <laughs> I think his lights just blinked when you said Leia Tron. <laughs> they felt it. They're blinking again. His headphones look like an Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, enough of this shit. K Way. <laughs> <laughs> what musician first played. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come to K Way to start that off? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get it back on track for everyone listening at home. I'm sure they want a show. <laughs> no. Oh, I don't know what they want. I don't know what they want. I don't care. <laughs> that's what we're here missing Game of Thrones for, so yeah. let's yeah. do it. <laughs> All right. The skull dropped into the water. What do you do? Let's get a marching order going right now, right here on the map. Where's the cursor? Aramay was in the front. Aramay's right here at the top of the stairs. Where is everybody else? I already moved myself to the corner. Okay, I see Zabril there. Next, oh. Vernicus, Svitlangi. Zabr- uh, Svitlangi will be opposite of Zabril. All right, that just so you know, those bushes are difficult to rain. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I didn't say it for Zabril is because he's a ranger and he's, he ignores difficult terrain in uh. bushes. <laughs> Copernicus is happy where he's at. Okay. Now, a good ten feet behind Aramay. He's he's over there sniffing the fucking dust from the coffin. Yeah, the yeah railing it. Did I miss any? Coffin Did dust. I miss any? <laughs> he's he's gumming the, the leftover dust, <laughs> packing it on the end of a cigarette, <laughs> dipping his mango leaves in there. Oh, shit. y'all know where I can get so any more it. of those nine gods. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Aramay, just so you know, I don't have my hourglass here, but just so you know, that water is moving, and the skull did look important, and it did drop into the moving water. Go get it. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Where's the, Where's the hourglass? hourglass? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We like the hourglass, man. We need more of that. <laughs> um, Fuck. We won't light anything on fire. Um, I don't think it's a good idea that Irume goes down there, but I suppose she might. Hold your breath. So Irume is going to take a deep breath in and slowly descend down the stairs. Slowly? <laughs> yeah, I'm not fucking running <laughs> down them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just running uh, to my dad. No, I was thinking normal speed. All right, fine. Right. Irume normally walks down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Unremarkably. <laughs> I don't normally See, walk downstairs, but know. when I do. <laughs> She's going to skip one step and then take it and then skip it and then take it. So this is going to be slow for Zavril, but he's going to go in next. Uh, however, as soon as he gets past the wall it, into the actual stairs, he's got to change masks. Okay. Hmm. What kind of flame spells does Svitlungi have? <laughs> Zabril <laughs> lower down there. takes the paper mache mask off. Ooh, risky. And puts on the plague doctor's mask. Puts on the plague doctor's mask. Actually, as a matter of fact, if Yermi's going to descend into the water, she's going to take her paper mache mask off and put it on one of the stairs. Okay. So it doesn't get wet. All right. Yermi takes the mask off, puts it on the stairs. What's Hold next? Up. Are they in the clouds yet? The two of them? I'm at the precipice of the cloud. Yeah, I would say Irame's in the cloud at that at that point. I mean, it's she's yeah, she's at the precipice. I Zabril's will, always in the clouds. I will reach out. I have a cantrip. I'd say the stairs are the cloud. What do we call that? I mean, it's not... You can breathe it. It doesn't... It's not poisonous. Mm. It's not noxious. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. I mean, you, you, can, you can safely... You know, when you first smelled it, it's it certainly smells uh, flammable, but it's not. Maybe ex- over extended period of time it might be Harmful. damaging. So as the two of them go down, uh, Cappy will rush up to the top of the stairs and Svetlongi, perhaps we should wait here. 
Just yes. for a moment. Perhaps. And Svitlanga will position herself so that she could both see down the stairs and, you know, still hang out with Copernicus. Um, Irime will cast a look back at Zavril and then go to where she thinks the skull landed in the water. All right, you move down in. Let me roll. Well, let me give her my rope. (laughs) We don't know how deep that water is or how strong the current is. Right. We estimated about three feet. I'll tie it around my waist, though. So Irime goes down the stairs. Now Zavril. Oh, that's a lot of DM rolling. Alright. And Irime, you're in the water. The water's about three feet deep. Um, yeah, you can certainly see the gas moving through you, but like, like I said, you can still breathe. You can choke your way through it, but it's not really harming you immediately anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to as quickly as possible uh, go to where I think the skull fell and begin to uh, feel around. Skull fell. I think that's a good name for a fort. Skull fell is a good one. Okay, feeling around. You feel something wet and slimy. Uh, <laughs> you reach your hand down and you certainly feel uh, you certainly feel things. Uh, <laughs> <living> <laughs> erecting from the floor. Ooh. Yeah. Gross. After care, you had to move in and to the left, a little downstream a bit, about maybe 10 feet. And you do, in fact, find the skull as it's slowly just kind of rolling along the bottom of the water. Well, that's interesting. Downstream is that way. That way. I was expecting I, it to be the other way I, as well. Same here. Really? I did not. Yeah. I expected it to be that way. Yeah. Of course you Me did, too. K-Way. No, and I'm, Cappy. K-Way on this one. Yeah, so, down, first time so ever. downstream is heading northwest. I'm going to open it up now that now that Irime is in here. I'm going to unfold the map a bit. Yeah, it's going to meet right up under the uh, grate yep. that Cappy picked up earlier. As well, just the way the motion of, on the map goes mm. kind of indicates. No, but I wasn't, but we didn't really see that motion before. Right. I still just don't see it. any motion. Oh, I guess that right there. Yeah. Yeah, the ripples. Yep. All I right. Just go <laughs> Um, as Irame moves towards the staircase to come up out of the water, she's uh, just going to, you know, say something that's probably obvious, but just relay that this must be the same stream that runs under the gate. It goes further in both directions. You tell Zavril that. Duly noted. Svetlanga, you can hear it. You can hear that. Did you get the skull? It's happening down there. Irame will hold up the skull so that Svetlanga can see it, kind of annoyed because she's wet and gross. And uh, start walking up the stairs, grabbing her mask to put back on. Our little princess had to get herself wet. Savril's <laughs> <laughs> gonna chuckle. I imagine Irma looks like a wet cat. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a happy camper. She's thinking she should have let Spitlongi fall on a poison spike. Ooh. John's just rolling dice. I don't like that. I know. He is just continually know, just rolling fucking dice. with us or what? <laughs> well, I'm seeing Zavril move around up there. <laughs> so what's going on? What are you guys doing? I'm I'm putting my mask on and fucking Yeah, I was making room for it to get back up to the stairs, but I didn't want to pass where uh, Vitlongi was. Okay. Gotcha. Be- are you guys? Because he said that it was barely enough opening for us to fit through. It wasn't as big as the one up yeah. above, so... Yeah, the gas is, especially now that there's movement going on down there, the gas is filling those stairs, that stairwell. Uh, perhaps we should get out of the group. <laughs> back, <laughs> Put your mask on and get back in here. Your may already has hers back on. It's for long you're blocking the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's for long you moving. She's moving. I thought you could move through a friendly square. You can. Anyway. You're going to make us awkwardly I fucking am run kinda, by you. <laughs> I am kind of surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of surprised that uh, Copernicus didn't communicate anything to me. It almost seemed like he wanted me to stay behind. <laughs> do you remember that? I do remember yeah. that. I thought you guys I remember that chat. too. But That's <laughs> I thought so too. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he's just looking out. Oh, he's just being cautious. Uh, there's no reason for us all to go down there and die. At once? I didn't know you cared, Drow. I don't want to die down here alone. 
<laughs> Even don't if I you die, have a, a snake woman, it's better than nothing. All right, where are we moving? Don't you to? have a Zorbo to keep you company? <laughs> that, amongst other things, I guess. Possessed by one too many spirits nowadays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did Zabriel well, change his mask? Are you changing? No, your mask? I did not. <laughs> change your mask. I was just gonna put the other one on top of the uh, dark alchemist mask. How? It's got a nose on it. <laughs> it's a paper mask. <laughs> He's going to stab the paper mask to the end of the book. Uh, I think by the rules, you're only allowed to don one mask <laughs> at a time. So which mask is it going to be? <laughs> well, I didn't want to do it inside of the uh, the gas. So I was waiting for Svitlongi to move out of the way. You can move through. I'll, you, you can, can move, move through Svitlongi. And yes, I will move out of the way. It but don't matter. enter the room without a mask. Right. But without yeah, the right mask. So like right where... It goes into the room. I was going to change out. All right. Zaves, as you're moving up to get by Svitlongi, you place your hand on the stone slab that had slid open, and it right. finishes opening. And as it does, you see a spark come out of where <laughs> it was sliding. And it, you just see it in slow motion as it ignites the gas. I would say uh, Zaves and Irame find themselves in a blazing inferno. What? I almost, I, uh, I should have did what I wanted to do earlier. As I the gas ignites, <laughs> just flares up. Svetlana, you actually, uh, you're right on the outskirts. You, you probably. Uh, I said flinch. like three times I was going to move out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> But you didn't. <laughs> I did. I yeah, he that. did. He did. Sit three no, times. I was that, going to. He just to, stood but. there. <laughs> well, because John has to move him. He can't move himself. Right. <laughs> I don't have a mouse. <laughs> it doesn't. It didn't. I don't have a mouse to put the mask on. It wouldn't have mattered because uh, every time somebody crossed that door, I was rolling a percentile. So, uh, so this is what happens. Let me find it. What type of attack is it? A fire, fire attack. <laughs> yeah, but is it like gas-based uh, hazards? So Arame and uh, Zaves give me a dexterity saving throw. Well, now the gas isn't attacking you. It's the fire. It's the, the so gas lit on fire. The fire is the hazard, not yeah. the gas. That's right. It's, igni- okay. it's ignition. 17. 17. Well, the reason why I was curious is because, you know, the mask the dark alchemist mask was advantage on saves against smell or gas based attacks and hazards that's right ah. yeah right if it was like a poison gas that would that's right work. exactly yep but no this is raw fire you said a deck save hey i'm good at this <laughs> 15 15 all right yeah that's middling <laughs> spit longy's not impressed all right, so both of you, you managed to use, you, you managed to succeed on the deck save, so you only take uh, twenty-one a, damage, eleven <laughs> fire damage each. Yep, I. You're in rough rest. shape. I am too. <laughs> so Aram, that puts Arame at what twenty wounds, makes her bloodied. Did it burn the masks? Oh, I wouldn't say they would. Why go do you ask stupid flame. questions? <laughs> I say uh, as 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 in, I say in, included with your past deck save, you uh, managed to avoid the masks getting burnt up. The worst case scenario, we could send Copernicus out of the room to get the ones that were collected by Svitlongi. Yep. And now right. the and now after all all said and done, the tunnel seems to be not so much filled with gas anymore. Nice and clear. Might as well explore it now. <laughs> I mean, they're are probably creatures living in the water. Yeah, Irme is fucking annoyed. <laughs> she just got roasted. Hey, at least at least you're wet. You didn't take as much damage as I did. Yeah, <laughs> but I was right there in we, the shit. We should head back to the Beacon Road and and check out the the statues to the north. I feel that's a safer move than going down into so. Tunnels. Did you get the statue? Or the key? Yes, I have the key. I already showed it to you, Spitlongi. 
Let's move out of here. Zavril is going to change his mask after being burnt. Um, and you see him moving really fucking slow because he's in a lot of pain right now. All right. Yes. He's in pain. He's in difficult terrain. <laughs> <laughs> he's also bloodied. So <laughs> no, uh, we should totally head back and take a short rest. Heal up a little. Yes, Irimea what? has to heal up barely, a little. I barely stop to. trying to attune your ring. Stop trying to. I uh, Irimea <laughs> now has less than half of her hit points. Uh, let's see. Svitlangi will. I might as well use some spells before we take a short rest, huh? I mean, I don't think we'll need to take a short rest. Do you get spells back after a short rest? No. <laughs> you, you do if you're an elf or a w- warlock. I'll use a spell anyway. Look at my little puny fucking health bar there. <laughs> Your little shit bar. Uh, Airme, I will cast Healing Word on you. And you will recover five points, five hit points. The first one. How many will it take before you feel comfortable not resting? Oh, that only puts me at 21. 21 wounds? Mm. No, 21 hit Short points. Short rest so is an 15 hour. 15 wounds. Yeah, mm-hmm. but... I don't think we need to, though, right? I'd like to attune that so magic item. So yeah. another one is six hit points. And that puts me back to where I was before I got hit by the fog. Or, I mean, by the uh, gas explosion. You We're at nine time. wounds. You'll have time to attune. I don't know. I might just drink a potion. Yeah, Copernicus. We just barely Why started. Why would you waste a precious potion? As opposed to precious spell points? I mean, no, the spell points will at least recover after a long rest. So I will do one. He not ha- inside of a dungeon. How wounded are you, Zavril? It looks like you're I think bloodied. that there's areas we can rest in the tomb I, of annihilation, even though it's a dungeon technically. Kind of have to. I, I will yeah. do it. I will yeah, do you healing. Can start, you're always free to take rests. There's just risks involved. You know, you got to you got to make preparations and such. Yes, I am fucking bloodied. Part of my language. <laughs> All right, uh, I do a, I do a healing word at I do a healing word at second level. Unacceptable, Zavril. This is a family show. For uh, wrong with him. Uh, eight, you recover eight. I am no longer bloodied. Oh, it's almost you get more out of casting it at two first levels than you get out of casting a second level hmm. because of the modifier, my wisdom modifier. Healing would word t- would, would apply twice. Any healing, uh, your healing mod, your modifier, your casting modifier would apply twice instead at, of the once. Instead of the once, but you've got to manage your slots. So. Right, that's what it is. It's the slots taking up a whole another one. And what about my wounds? <laughs> Fucking slots. Is there anything you can do for me, Svetlongi? You do not look quite as bloodied. How we just got are burnt you? to a crisp over here. What are you complaining about, Copernicus? Yeah, Irme is like wet and like also hot and fucking. she <laughs> smells like burnt most, hair right now. Most, <laughs> it's so fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> what's the most? What's the most obvious wound that Copernicus has? Like the most visible? Probably the bruises from being dragged on his ego. Present, <laughs> present your wound to me, Drow. I'm not going to cry, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Lest we forget when I was dragged across this very room and smashed into that statue. Present your wounds. Present your wounds to me. He's just Part. bruised and... You should just moon her. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to get <laughs> disgusting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just you have some James, James, James would have done that. Pissing. Pissing. You have a scrape or a uh, bruise or anything that just, you want Just bruise from being dragged across the room. Bludgeoning damage, he's trying to say. <laughs> yeah, but wait, which present one? Like, is it on your elbow? Is it on your forehead? Give him a fucking <laughs> limb or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you would see it, uh, you know, across his face, it's bruise. Okay. Mm-hmm. But he- Svitlangi leans forward and she gives Copernicus a kiss on his bruise. <laughs> and, and she says, they're there now. <laughs> <laughs> Licks it with sleep. her forked tongue. <laughs> <laughs> now that feels better, doesn't it, Drow? It does. Just like my mother's kiss. <laughs> Just like mummy used to do. Back before I slit her throat. 
<laughs> back before she was brutally murdered like you're about to be. <laughs> that got dark quick. Yeah. And I'm only teasing him because you don't look that <laughs> wounded. No, no. He's just he's just reaching out. Right. Xavier oh. still has 30 wounds, right? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> This episode's going nowhere. Oh, what the heck. I'll do another <laughs> healing word on Zavril. I should have just used the potion. Yeah. Uh, six. Recover six. You have to long rest to get any of your spells back. Yeah. I'm keeping my... Zavril looks pretty good. I'm keeping my higher level spell slots. Okay. I have open. 24 wounds right now. Oh, shit, son. <laughs> you still have more yeah, hit points than me. Yeah, but your total hit points are Yeah, me and you are fair. deadlocked at 44. Yep. Let's uh move on. I, I want to know what this fountain room's about before we go down. To <laughs> it heals you full of hit points, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else do fairies do? Yeah, drink it. Let us know. I'm already possessed by two different fucking entities. <laughs> All right, Copernicus and Zavril move up into the fountain room. The fuck, Zavril? The fuck Copernicus does? Uh, Zavril, thought, what are you doing going first? I thought you said I, I want to know you what's were going. the one that wanted to. I would like to know what's up there. He that. did. He definitely just did. <laughs> but when Zavril goes first, no. Irime, you go first. That's just, the way we do things. You always go first. <laughs> yeah, it's send, a horrible idea. It's Irime first. Yeah, send the squishy in. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. Zavril, then Zvitlongi. That's the way we do things. Okay, sure. Zavril, Zavril you come out now. Irmay's going to move down the corridor just murmuring to herself about all the shit she's done so far. <laughs> I guess we are investigating the uh, maidens. Yeah. Who else? So just you guys are going up there? No, I'll follow. I'll follow. You know, this seemed bad last time this happened. I'll go behind him. <laughs> It's a bit longer. Uh, Irme will walk the circumference of the room, like the circular room, just uh, checking for anything. All right, Copernicus, as you approach the fountain, you hear again that voice. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't drink that to follow you. You've been warned. Uh, he kind of swishes the water around with his, uh, with his packed weapon. Don't drink this water. The Zorbo has told me not to drink the water. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Perhaps we should try to leave a message for those who may come <coughs> after us. And uh, if there's dust or anything like that, we could, uh, you know, write don't drink or something like that in yeah. it. If there's not Gabby. dust, we can gather. <laughs> leave a Dark Souls note. Yeah, we can gather all. rust piles. If there's no dust, we can yeah. gather some I actually rust have chalk, do. so. Oh, do you? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Irme, He's a ranger, baby. Does Irme see anything <laughs> when gotcha. walking the circumference of the room? Uh, no. no. It's nice, smooth stone. I don't know why we shouldn't drink the water. He just came to me and told me, don't do it. And you trust the Zorbo? <laughs> he does seem, if nothing else, cautious. We don't need it anyway. No reason to take the risk. Are the rest of us allowed to drink it, or just not you? <laughs> he just said, don't drink the water, Hunter. <laughs> if you want to test it, then by all means, I couldn't think of a better candidate than you. I like how everybody's calling Zavril Hunter now. <laughs> Kapanka has been calling him Hunter for quite some time. I don't know if I, I picked know. it up from Svitlongi or not. I still call him Zavril. Hunter and Zavril. Is, yeah, He's got a go name. Tos. <laughs> he has a name. He's Hunter, you're snake woman, and she's <laughs> elf. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like three different people. So what are we doing here around this fountain? I, I am chalking the, uh, the fountain not to drink. All right. Does that conclude our efforts in this room? Hmm. Let's see where this key goes. Are we going to finish exploring this? Uh... Man, I wish we didn't set down that beacon. Why? Because we still have the entire east side of the dungeon to clear. Yeah, let's explore the east side of the dungeon. Yeah. The beacon's fine. Can we st and, and we also have a stairwell down to the next floor right next to the beacon. Right. We can always take the beacon with us. 
Yeah, we may be able to disarm it and rearm it. Or deactivate and reactivate, rather. Let's let us continue to explore this level, level of. I agree. Let's yeah, move so to the east side. Backtrack. All right. Uh, where are you guys backtracking to? The uh, room with the stairs to begin with, and the uh, big railing. Yeah, there are different, a few different ways we can go here. We don't want to go down yet, right? No, I don't think so. Okay, so then there is an east and a north. I corridor. vote north. No. You vote well, east? Yeah, I was saying east. What about Let's you, Spitlongi? North or east? The sun rises in the east. And Zaveril? North or east? I would say east first. Okay, so fr- so you guys, just to draw it out for the peeps, you guys made your way back uh, the way you initially came, back to that large chamber with the stairwell going down the, with the ba- wraparound balcony. Uh, from there, there's stairs going down. There's a passage directly to the east. And then if you wrap around all the way to the other side, there's another slender passage going north. And it looks like it's four to one here. Well, three to one, Copernicus. Oh, uh, your friend right. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Zaves, where did you go? I am down like five blocks from Spitlungi. Okay, I see you now. <laughs> Apparently, I just fell down unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I fainted. All right, so Zaves, why don't you go ahead and take points since you since you can you have control of your character here? All right, I'm going to start traversing along the outside of the the room, um, following the railing, making certain that uh, I display my my nibbleness walking through these fucking bushes, you know, because it might be rough terrain for everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Yep. Um, up until the the corner. So we, do we see anything while we're moving around? I wasn't sure if that was an open area to the south. Uh, nope, you don't see anything down there. So as you ra- as that you, was our false entrance. Mm. Yep. So as you mo- as you Zaves, as you before around you move before you right. round that corner, right as you get to that eastern passage, looking down. You notice on a balcony below a dwarf-like figure wearing like a bone helmet, horned helmet. It's almost like a, it's the, looking closer, it's a demon mask. And the demon has a beard. And he looks up at you, just if only for a moment. And then he turns away. And he disappears into the darkness down below. It appears our position has been given. Where was this ledge? On the level below us. It's a level, yeah, the level. But is it on the opposite end? Yeah, is it on the opposite side of the room? Uh, no, it's it's on the northern side where the stairs are going down. The stairs go down and open into another balcony. Does he notice us? The yes, bone he looks at form? us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We made eye contact for a little bit. I <laughs> stared too long. He got scared and left. <laughs> it got it got weird. <laughs> I will. I will give yes. you if you if you know be, because I'll get if you want to act before he disappears. If you have uh, or something that you can do from that distance, um, you certainly can. I I have nothing I can do. All right. Uh, but yeah, okay, so then uh, you're noticing that now to the east. Masks certainly are in fashion in this too. Mm. Yes. The, east, true. the eastern corridor. Looking down it, about 5, 10, 15, 20, about 30 feet, 25, 30 feet down, a giant stone skull crusted with moss juts out from the end of the passageway. I'm not touching that. A flame flickers within each of its eye sockets, and a view into the chamber beyond can be seen through its open jaws. Ooh. Yep. Now, just so you know, the ma- the uh, opening of the mouth is large enough for a medium-sized creature to pass through it. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're a medium-sized creatures. As big as the creatures. other ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually... Sounds like Copernicus is volunteering. Interesting. 
But I'm wondering if we can move those flames to the other one. Yeah, you may be right. Perhaps if lighting the eyes ablaze cancels the spell of darkness. All yeah, right, I will uh, briefly describe what I see and then move north again another five feet. All right, you guys hear Zavril describe the skull. Um, I also described the, the guy that was spying on us in, in case nobody else saw him. Then we must be on our guard. Whatever's down there knows we're here now. I'm that sorry. Can't be good. Was it a dwarf in a mask or a demon dwarf? I'll, uh, They're share both the same. I'll share a picture <laughs> of what you saw. Oh, the fuck. Oh, that fucking mask is awesome, though. <laughs> oh, so the mask is like the demon face. Mm hmm. Yeah. And the opening, like his eyes and nose are sticking out. We need to get that up somewhere. That is awesome. Yeah, and he's holding a, like a battle axe or something. A crossbow on his back? Yeah. That, that's the purest definition of battle axe. So that's the guy you saw down below. And when he saw you, he, didn't, he, uh, he just turned away and walked slowly into the darkness. Mm. He didn't like... He didn't start. He wasn't startled. He didn't. He's probably used to adventurers just not making it past this point anyway. <laughs> well, how many dwarf. adventurers made it in here? Exactly. Well, I bet. I bet a bunch. They gathered up all the cubes. They solved all the riddles. They made it the way in here. Yeah. Uh, Suddenly, so wasn't any grungs. The um, <laughs> we could see through the mouth right into the room beyond. You sure can. All right, Svitlong, you will start approaching the statue. She might do a perception check while we're walking down this hallway just to make sure no... Traps. Oh, poison darts. I'll aid you. Yeah, please aid me. All right. All right, that's better. Thank you for the aid, Aramie. 20 on the perception. Uh, 20 on the perception. Yeah, other than just the, you know, the, the damp air, the the struggling foliage that's growing within the cracks, the cracked ceiling where the sunlight's hitting. Um, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary until you get up to the skull. What you do notice on that skull is the lower jaw is hinged. Mm. It could potentially... The jaw is hinged. Perhaps. Though it's already wide enough for us Mm. to squeeze through, it may be trapped that it would close upon one. Mm. Or if if it lowers with somebody's weight. Uh, It may be wise to prop it open just in case. Now I'll go ahead. Now that you're close enough and looking through that, uh, through, I'll reveal what's on the other side. Another sarcophagi. Skulls crusted with dried mud glower from niches cut into the walls of this room it looks to be roughly 30 feet long 30 feet wide a stone sarcophagus stands at the center of the chamber its lid adorned with a coiled serpent carved in relief behind the sarcophagus resting atop a marble pedestal is an ornate crystal box with a small humanoid skull floating inside of it and that's what you see through the jaws of this thing. So, uh, looking to yeah on the map, you see the sarcophagus there, and just behind it, about five feet or so, is that crystal box. And inside of the box a is, floating is a small humanoid skull floating inside of it. Perhaps the resting place of another trickster god. Uh, the jackalai was the snake, right? If the engraving on the sarcophagus means anything. Yeah, Moa was his name. Mm. Shall we prop the jaws open before we enter? Uh, Copernicus is slowly coming up behind the group around that corner with his buckler raised. But he's staying well behind you guys. Yes, I do think we should prop it open to see what happens. What do we have to prop it open with? Are there any brambles from the bushes wide enough to prop it open? Uh, perhaps um, I can hold it open while you guys go through. Yeah, there's not much in the way of like sticks or branches. This is just all small, like on the ground. Mm. You know, almost Could like it, blueberry a, bushes up on would Cardigan. A, <laughs> would a torch work? <laughs> no, torch might work. <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't a torch work? To prop. Uh, I, I mean, mean it might. A, it's I already like offered. I, I will guard the opening while you guys go through. You'll hold it no. open. Yes. We're talking. 
but with what? My, my problem is, is that the trap might not go off when we prop when we lower the jaw. It might go off when we have to let the jaw up. Uh, can we investigate we, it and yeah. see how this works? If there is even a trap, or yeah, yeah, you give me a uh, perception check. Aid somebody, ate him. I will aid him. Thank you. Hey, eleven. <laughs> I don't know why not I, did, very I didn't just uh, aid him. I thought well. Ben Longy just, was gonna aid him. Yeah. And then no, he's no, like, no. Somebody, somebody ate him. him. <laughs> I don't know why I thought like because <laughs> I because I initially looked. Ate him. I just met him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beyond well, that's Cappy's perception. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't see trapped. anything else under, uh, out of the ordinary other than what uh, Irame already pointed out, which is the hint. The jaw of this uh, entrance is uh, is hinged, so. Prop it open, and I will walk through. Oh, Irame should know. probably go first. <laughs> no. All right, what are you propping no. it with? <laughs> well, isn't that how we normally do it? Yes, but as situations become more dire, I don't think that's the prudent way to you go about You said you had a torch. Perhaps we could prop the jaw open with the torch. That is what I think. Yeah, if it looks strong enough, you know. Um, uh, it might be small, but at the same time, we can kind of. Yeah, step you think through. it's too? Sh- you think a torch would be too short? Yes, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Oh, like, stronger than yeah, me. but well, as the, long the as the we hole can get is only, through the hole, the hole is only big enough for a medium person to get through. So, how many feet tall could it be? Right, I mean, and does that mean, like, standing up and walking through, or does that mean, like, stepping through, like, sort of, like, yeah. making your way through? Can we, can I, we was, have to I was thinking crawling through, That's like, what I was thinking, over, crawling. trying to fucking... Right, in that case, I think a torch, a torch is would probably do it. fine. Yeah. And if Very not, Cappy staying stuff there like that, to I don't know. try to hold it open. Right. As back With your up. own sheer strength. Right. If that will do Well, it, then I, I should it. probably stay with Cappy so that I can help him open it up. So you'd be aiding a strength check, yeah. potentially. So Cappy and, yeah. All right. Irame will stand back and watch somebody else explode. Svitlongi will go through while they're <laughs> holding it up. I don't like this. <laughs> you shouldn't be going first. Who? Svitlongi. Why? Because it's not how we do things. Well, it's not wise for me. To, I have 27 shit points, Copernicus. <laughs> <laughs> shit points. <laughs> feel more comfortable when you go first. I don't know why. It's irrational. It's not. It is. It's how we've done it. It's, it's, but it's stupid, but it's stupid. And when you go first, Would it you just well. let her go first? If she gets blown up, who Perhaps cares? Perhaps he, he is afraid that I will close the entrance behind me. We all know we can't trust her. So, here we go. Uh, so you guys prop the torch. You wedge it in the jaw. Who's holding it open? Copernicus My and Zavril. Copernicus and Zavril. I am aiding Copernicus. Yeah. All right. Uh, so Copernicus is going to try to hold it while both of you guys are holding it. I think that would be where the aid is. And who's climbing through it? Apparently we're in the middle of an argument whether it's Vitlongi or Irme goes first. Well, I think Irme should go first, obviously. I don't care. This mouth is getting heavy. Just go. <laughs> But I think Svitlongi was going. Mm-hmm. Through half this game that Svitlongi's been here, Cappy has agreed with her, and Arame has been the one that's been kind of hesitant. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Now it's swapped around. Well, it's not so much that she all of a sudden trusts her. It's more so that she just got her ass You're looking out for your own. soaked and then blown up <laughs> with, no, with no recognition as to what she'd done or accomplished, and she's fucking sitting Indian style. P- how do you shit is watching you guys <laughs> deal with this? Oh, okay, so uh, we got Z- we got Zephyr and Copernicus on either side of the jaw holding it with the torch pinned in there. We got Svitlongi and Irame standing out. Svitlongi will move through. Svitlongi, as you move through, you crawl Goodbye, into Snake Woman. Svitlongi, uh, you enter the room. Open this up now that you're in it. <laughs> we let the jaw close and just run away. It's just a boss fight. <laughs> just leave her there. <laughs> I'm actually going to open this you up would a little. It if I was victorious. Like when the walls <laughs> seal yes. off when you go into a boss fight. <laughs> I'm going to open it up a little more to build some anxiety here. There's a fog wall. The walls start closing in. Especially if there's a load screen so you don't realize your crew doesn't come with you. 
<laughs> Spit you're long, zoning like, in. Yeah, you zone Spit in. And you're like, fuck. Like Are you guys going to hit the button? <laughs> Spit long is like 11th level. She could handle whatever's in here. Oh, shit. All right, and then um, she'll come back and get revenge on you. So Svetlanki enters the room just fine. You don't know. You don't notice or feel anything. Uh, however, you guys on the outside, you notice one of the flames goes out in the eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. The eye socket. If it's anything yeah. like the door, with each person that passed through it. The trap opened wider until it was set off. Perhaps if another person goes through, we lose the other flame and something horrible happens. If Svitlongi can manage to handle whatever's in there by herself when she passes back out, everything should be okay. Right? That sounds wise. Perhaps. Uh, move quickly, Svitlongi, for your own health. <coughs> Svitlongi is going to look kind of irritated. And she's going to say, and what do you propose that I move quickly and do? At that, you hear the voice of a young girl echo in your mind. Svetlongi. Shit, you about get possessed. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, what is happening? I see nothing but darkness. Is somebody there? Darkness it hides. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is look around. You look around, you don't see, you see uh, these tiny little skulls in the walls. And in the mouths of those skulls, dark holes. Maybe the size of like a rat, maybe. Small rat. And then you also hear the skittering. Could it be, a, could it be rodents? Could it be, say, it's not rodents. tarantulas? Just seeing, <laughs> just seeing, just knowing that uh, what happened with Copernicus in the last uh, crypt. She has her suspicions, you know. She's going to approach the sarcophagus. Again, you hear, why do my eyes see nothing? Somebody there, help me. Are you friends of my father? Is he looking for me? Have patience, child. I will find a way to set you free. Who are you talking to? And as you're looking around, Svitlongi, you're looking at the sarcophagus, and then your attention is drawn to the crystal box with the floating skull in it. Copernicus, did she say child? You can hear me. The skull, it sounded like. Does the skull seem to be doing anything? No. All right, I'm going to do a perception check on the sarcophagus first. Irame is going to... And then on the pedestal with the skull. While right. you're looking around, Irame is going to yell through the mouth, um, Speak no truth to the doomed child. I don't know if it's applicable here. Yeah, my perception was a 6 on the old uh, sarcophagus. And a 15 on the Good skull. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. I mean, you don't notice anything. The sarcophagus itself... Uh, you don't see a lock on it, other than the uh, the serpent relief carving. You don't really notice anything out of the out of the uh, usual about it. Does it look uh, too heavy to open? It looks like uh, it looks like a good athletics check could slide it open. I'll give it a try. Fuck. Nope. Seven. Now while he's doing this, what are you guys doing? Uh, I want to give you guys a chance to play. <laughs> Irmaze just was looking over her notes and, uh, you know, gave Svitlongi that clue that we had gotten in the beginning once right. she had See, heard. Not, I might throw that out from my mind because you're not here if you're not hearing it. I know, but you spoke to her and we heard you speak to her out loud. And I, That's true. And you said okay. child. Okay, okay. And then I asked good Copernicus, call. I said, did he say child? And Copernicus said, yes, I think she did. And that's when I yelled at him. Okay, good call. I was looking over my spells and stuff, so I wasn't hearing it. It's <laughs> funny because I almost mentioned it before. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm about to metagame. <laughs> <laughs> Meta man. Gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> but then you said it, and I was like, did he say child? Here's my opportunity. <laughs> No, Cappy's holding tight. He's not going in. Yeah, me and Cappy are both just on the outside of this, making sure that it doesn't close in. 
So Svitlangi is the only one in there. No one else is going to back her up. Huh? Uh, I'm, ner- I'm nervous <laughs> so that that other flame will go out if I go in there. She needs help opening that sarcophagi. Yeah, you see her st- struggling to open it, and she just can't get it. Too heavy. Right. Zavril, I'll hold the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold the door, Cappy. You go help her. <laughs> hold door. It looks like Copernicus goes to like go in, and then he stops himself, and he's just no, no, yeah, I can't, I'll, I can't I'll, do uh, it. Fuck it. I well, will approach. I will go back to where I could talk to the rest of the group through the entrance. What do you two think? Do you think it's safe for for me to pass through, or no. if that other flame goes out, we're screwed? Drow, can you not? teleport to move. Have you not bragged about this before? Of, of course I can, but it's, it drains me a lot to do things like that. I am having trouble opening the sarcophagus on my own. I'm just a girl. <laughs> a girl in the world. You don't want to sniff any more ashes, Cappy? No, I, I do have like a mind. I have no proficiency in the... In I have a athletics, m- and I have a minus on my strength. I have a minus one in strength as well. Give I me mean, a persuasion check. All right, here we go. Persuasion. Anybody else going to help me persuade Cappy? him? <laughs> Anybody else going to like chime in on my side? Yeah, here? I will aid you because yeah. I would be of no use in there, and someone else needs to be able to hold it. All right, that's a sixteen on persuasion. What do you think, Jay? Roll a wisdom save or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Oh yeah, I mean, what's the uh, what's your what's the, what's the DC that you're going after? Whatever I rolled for persuasion. Uh, wisdom would be fifteen. And I got a sixteen. My persuasion. Oh, you're going yeah. in. Yeah, so at that point, they convince you to move in. I would say. Really, it's gonna be me. <laughs> we got this. Copernicus, mm-hmm. we can hold the door open. We All can right, get well, you out. Irma, get in here and get your hands well on this. Who knows what <laughs> when the light goes out? Uh, Irma will take Copernicus's place at the jaw, doing as best you as she can. You don't have to move through. You can use your powers or abilities. If you use your power to teleport through, we don't run the risk of losing that flame by moving through the mouth. We've both we talked. We've both talked about. Well, our we don't know that. Board. You're right, but it's likely. Okay. I'll dimension door into the room. Do it. Uh, all right, so put him inside the bag of holding. Pull him back out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could take the whole party in the bag of holding. And then <laughs> dimension door. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's only... I don't think you guys could fit in it. Can you? No, we can't. <clears throat> um, this came up before. Mm. Uh, so Copernicus, you're dimensioning door in? But you could take <laughs> another person if you dimension door only a hung halfling. A mm. hung halfling? A hung halfling. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so Copernicus just says, Espression! And boom. He goes through space and time as to the exact point he wants to. <laughs> as you're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ten feet. <laughs> As you're about to cast a spell, you hear I beak, and then uh, <laughs> done. <laughs> you teleport in, and then you hear. Well, that was close. You almost killed us both. <laughs> I thought you were doing something else. Oh, my mistake. <sighs> Obalaka, Obalaka, talk to me, my friend. Who are you speaking to, Drow? And yeah, Copernicus enters the room, and the other flame—the other flame—is still there in the eye. I need a hand getting this. Let's do it. Sarcophagus open. All right, roll. Uh, and you hear that voice I'm again. Helping. Oh, so you're helping you me. Yeah. No. It's only one. a four. You get advantage. Oh, I get advantage. Nineteen. Ninety-nineteen. Oh, first shit. one in a long time. You yeah, fucking it's been a while. You flip it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, you <laughs> said I heard something though. What would, right. what As hear? you're attempting it, you hear again Svitlongi. You hear. Oh, Svitlongi. Yeah. You hear that child's voice again in your head. Please talk to me. It's so dark. What is happening? Uh. Does anything. Do we see anything when he opens? The, I'm not going to respond. I'm just going to wait till. 
the lid pops off, do we see anything? You're g- gonna ignore her and <laughs> <laughs> after Air Maze, after fucking yeah. Air Maze warning, yeah. Um. Okay, you ignore her and the lid opens and you see Cappy doesn't hear it? No. He's just open for any kind of infestation. (laughs) 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 Alright. The stone sarcophagus. Inside, a bundle of faded cloth holds serpentine bones of a jackalai. And also, a staff rests atop those remains. And the, the staff is like a coiled. The, the there's a staff head, and it's got like a coiled snake. It's gonna say, Cappy like recoils away from the item, the body, the oh, the, the oh. bones and everything. Just he just is like no. And you hear again. I know you're there. Why do you ignore me? I'm gonna clutch oh, onto God. my. I'm gonna clutch <laughs> oh, onto my holy symbol of Seth, and I'm gonna going to say. You spirits of this temple of nine gods, Jackalai, get thee back. Get thee out of this prime material plane and suffer your misery elsewhere and cast banishment. So that is a wisdom... No, charisma saving throw. On what? The snake what or the... Cast on on the fucking Jackalai. <laughs> <laughs> no, the jack. The Jackalai is, is no dead. Jackalai. It's just bones of it. <laughs> Somebody's there. Somebody's there, right? Yeah, yeah, it's worth a shot. There's bones. Oh, you think, wait, wait, you wait, think wait, it's wait. the spirit of the jackalai fucking with you? Is yes. That, yeah. So maybe uh, before I could do that, maybe I have to grab the staff and then the smoke will come up and then <laughs> and that's when I do it. <laughs> that's got to be it. <laughs> Here, I thought it was the skull wait. inside of the fucking the crystal. <laughs> It could be the skull. Your face, <laughs> I imagine your face like. All right, so her fuck it. Butter needs being like. There's no snake. <laughs> all right, I'll grab down on looking to. through the doorway. <laughs> You're doing it all wrong. I'll grab it. <laughs> Come in here and show me. So I'll grab. Told on. you you should have gone in. So my holy <laughs> symbol with one hand. I'll grab onto the staff with the other, and then see if any like coalescence appears the same way that it appeared when the drow took the ring. Uh, yes. When you, as soon as you touch the staff, the spirit of Moa manifests. Green smoke billows from the staff, coiling around you like a serpent. A sibilant voice whispers in your ear, Let me help you. I promise to be good. And it's clearly a different voice than the one you were hearing earlier. Well, and that's the one, that's when I'll go through my speech (laughs) okay (laughs) and cast banishment so I don't know how we want to handle this now right well do you need a target for banishment because there's not really a target the billowing doesn't count as a target well, it's, I think it's too. I think the billowing happens too quickly. Well, it's just a. Bi- or it did to Copernicus. It's one creature that I could see within range, so I don't see a creature. <coughs> yeah, it doesn't count as a creature. It's not. It's not oh. a. It's just a billow of green smoke from the staff that coils around you like a serpent, and then it whispers in your ear. But Damn it, I, had, I thought I was fucking <laughs> handling that. And shit. <laughs> but I mean, that being Getting said, that being said, there is uh, clearly a mental. Uh, th- so when when it whispers that to you, whoosh, now it's just you in darkness with this snake. Not darkness, but there's like ambient glows here and there, different color hues, and it's you in this uh, jackalai. Oh, look, speaking. you're back with your family. Mm. S- speaking to one another. Svitlongi, resist it. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> and uh, there's clearly an attempt, an invasive attempt. Again, you don't feel that it's hostile. Okay. Uh, but there's, so you, if you resist it, it's going to be a charisma check. If not, and you let it in, you'll let it in. Much, much like your banishment charisma check. Uh, so my question, I guess, is does it count as a creature, this thing that I'm seeing? 
Can I go for the banishment? It doesn't count as a creature. All right. And do I have an action that I could do? Uh, no, at this point. I think you can just see it. In like, a- can I cast resistance on myself? At this point, it would be. I would allow a reaction. It, this happened as soon as you. It, it okay. triggered nope. when you touched the staff. So at this point, you can react to that. Nope. I don't have any reactions that will uh, do anything. So let's. I'm going to resist, though. All right. It's going to be a saving throw, charisma saving throw. All right. God damn. This dice has been rolling low. This <laughs> die right here has been Switch rolling it low. Out. The other one hasn't. Uh, Natty 19. Ooh, yeah. Oh, shit. And that's a uh, plus five on the charisma. So if you want to get technical, it's a 24. With a disappointed hiss, the jackalai disappears back into the staff. You should have taken it. <laughs> you just told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. I don't want anybody invading me. And now at this point, again, you hear... Do not ignore me, please. I need help. Why are you not talking to me? Cappy will open himself up to it. (laughs) (laughs) And collect all the nine gods. (laughs) Hmm. Should we... Should I... Hmm. The messages speak no truth to the doomed child. Are you here to help me? Or are you to leave me like the others? Yes, we are here to help you. All right, give me a uh, persuasion. I think that's charisma. Yep. Oh, God, please. <laughs> two two <laughs> high rolls a, in a row. A, I'm sorry, it's a deception <laughs> check. Deception. Ooh, Which is also charisma, but it's a deception. Fuck, ten. I rolled a five on the die. What's your... What's your Oh, it's ten total. Yeah, ten plus total. five. I have oh, plus five, damn. and I rolled a five. On okay, the yeah, not worth. A so you hear again? I do not believe you. Why did you ignore me earlier? In case you haven't noticed, I was doing something. <laughs> I don't. I can't see anything. I see only darkness. She's beginning to get anxious now. What is the? And nothing is indicating any kind of activity. The skull is not doing anything. No, you don't see anything in the skull. Should we take the skull? Should we not even touch that? The skull, skull is inside of a uh, crystal or box. The, should we take the, you know, yeah, the crystal box? I'm almost tempted to smash the crystal box. Drow, do you hear the child speak? Do I hear it? No. No, I hear no child, Svetlongi. Whatever you're wrestling with now, you're on your own. Calm, child. Calm yourself. All right. uh, Again, another (laughs) charisma check. Final one. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) I'm telling you, this die is just... It's a pretty die, but... (laughs) (laughs) The hot die? What'd you get? A seven. A seven. I rolled a natural two. He says, why do you keep telling me to calm down? I need help, and I need it now. And now you see the skull, green flames burst from the, from the top of it. Fuck. And the, and the uh, crystal case around it shatters. And I think it's time to get out of there. The mouth opens, and you see fire welling up inside of it and now at that you hear the scurrying from the walls getting louder and more restless as they start shaking and then forgot about that hundreds (laughs) of tarantulas reeking of death start clawing their way out of all those little mouths of the skulls filling the room (laughs) swarms of these undead spiders start closing in on Svitlongi and Copernicus (laughs) <laughs> it's just you and me, Drow. Copernicus, get both of you out of there. Irame's just going to yell that for him to dimension door them out if they if he can. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Shadow step. <laughs> I fucking hate spiders, just for the record. <laughs> Why did it have to be spiders? Why did it have to be spiders? <laughs> I have to wait it's a week. because Irame didn't go first.